And welcome back everybody to another edition of Historical Geocaching on the Road. I am super, super excited. My family and I are heading down to Chickamauga Battlefield in North Georgia today, part of Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park, the nation's oldest and largest national military park. It has some really cool monuments and nature and history, and let's just go have fun learning more about the second bloodiest battle of the entire Civil War. All of that is coming up next. Welcome to Chickamauga Battlefield, folks. Yippee! And hey everybody, I am so excited we are here at Chickamauga Battlefield Visitor Center. So here we are at Chickamauga Battlefield at Tour Stop 1, which is the Florida Monument that uh, the Florida built to honor its soldiers who fought here at Chickamauga and in the Civil War. Really cool marker, a monument that says this monument has been erected in memory of the soldiers of the state of Florida who took part in the battle fought here September 19th and 20th, 1863, whether they fell in battle or lived to render further services to their state and country. Really cool monument. Let's keep on having some fun here at Chickamauga Battlefield. As you can see folks, there are a lot of really cool monuments here at Chickamauga Battlefield talking about the battle and um, we are here at Tour Stop 2. Let's see what cool monuments we can discover. Hardship on the Union Line. Soldiers battled fatigue, thirst, and cold. On the night of September 19, 1863, when the first day of bloody fighting had ended, the two armies regrouped and planned their strategy for the next day. The Federal left withdrew to a line which extended to your left and right from this point. The Confederate line was at your back. Already weary after the day's fighting, the Union soldiers here could not find rest. Their axes rang as they built breastworks of logs, rails, and earth to defend against the attacks that would come in the morning. Cold and thirst plagued the Federals through the night. Their canteens ran dry and Confederates blocked their access to Chickamauga Creek and other water sources. It was unusually chilly for a September night, but with the enemy so near, campfires were prohibited. A Wisconsin soldier wrote, We had a slight frost. We lay on our arms without blankets or even coats, having thrown away everything but our gun and ammunition. By the morning of September 20th, 1863, General Braxton Bragg had organized his Confederate army into two wings, Longstreet's on the left and Polk's here on the right. Bragg ordered Polk to attack at dawn. However, the attack was delayed and the Federals used the first critical hours of daylight to strengthen their log breastworks. Finally, at 9.30 a.m., Major General John C. Breckinridge's Confederate Division struck the Union breastworks at this point. Other Confederate Union units joined them as the attacks spread southward along the line of monuments behind you. The pressure of these attacks forced Union Commander Major General William Rosecrans to move men from his center to stop the attacks here on his left. About noon, the futile and costly Confederate charges ended, not to be resumed until late afternoon. The Federals stood firm behind their log wall, awaiting the outcome of the fighting still raging south of here. <laughs> 